Prophethood is a concept that is common to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Both the Bible and the Quran define the concept of prophethood in highly noble terms. So we should expect God's prophets to embody these ideals by being the best of people, with their behavior and lives representing a practical example for mankind to follow in order to come closer to God. The Bible tarnishes Aaron with the involvement in the worst of sins, idolatry. The people gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf. Monotheism, worshipping only one God, was the very essence of the message that God tasked Moses and Aaron to impart on the Israelites. So from this point of view, a prophet of God failed in the most basic of duties. The Bible goes on to tell us that God punished the Israelites who worshipped the calf idol with a plague. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Aaron, however, was spared any such punishment, even though it is said that he was the individual that made the idol. Shouldn't prophets be more accountable than common people due to the greater knowledge that they possess? and their higher positions of responsibility? By comparison, in the story that the Qur'an narrates, Aaron is free of the major sin of idolatry. It was in fact an individual called Samari who made the idol. In the Qur'an, it says that Aaron even orders the Israelites not to worship the golden calf. Aaron did say to them, My people, this calf is a test for you. Your Lord is the Lord of mercy, so follow me and obey my orders. We can see that the Qur'anic account not only presents Aaron in a manner that is befitting of a great prophet of God, but it also does not contain any of the inconsistencies present in the biblical narrative. Job and his many alleged blasphemies The story of Job in the Bible is one of a prophet being severely tested. The story begins with God highly praising Job for his righteousness. God says to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Satan proceeds to challenge God, stating that the only reason Job is upright is because Job has a good life. Satan predicts that if God were to test Job properly, then Job would curse God. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. God allows Satan to test Job, and once the trials commence, Job fails to remain patient and even goes so far as to blaspheme against God numerous times. Then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. I am innocent, but God denies me justice. It profits a man nothing when he tries to please God. Now the way the story unfolds is highly problematic. There is the issue of a prophet of God committing blasphemy, one of the worst sins imaginable, also, the Bible is alluding to Satan knowing more than God in this instance by correctly predicting what would happen. Recall that God asserted that Job was a man who fears God and shuns evil. Satan challenged God by predicting that Job would blaspheme, and so Satan has proven God wrong. Can Satan, a limited and finite being, have more insight into Job than God? The Quran resolves all these issues in just a few short verses. Job doesn't blaspheme against God. Rather, he blames Satan for his hardship. Bring to mind our servant Job, who cried to his Lord. Satan has afflicted me with weariness and suffering. God compliments Job for his patience in the face of such trials. We found him patient in adversity, an excellent servant. He too always turned to God. Job's righteous conduct in the Quran is exactly what we would expect of a prophet of God. Both the Bible and the Qur'an define the concept of prophethood in highly noble terms. After examining the stories of the prophets, we've seen that it's only the Qur'an that portrays the prophets in such a way that satisfies this ideal. One of the names of the Qur'an is al furqan meaning the criterion between truth and falsehood. So the Qur'an not only confirms the scriptures that came before it, but it also corrects their distortions. We sent to you, Muhammad, 
the scripture with the truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it, and with final authority over them, so judge between them according to what God has sent down. The Quran defends God's righteous prophets against the slander and falsehood attributed to them in the Bible. It provides the best guidance for those who want good examples to follow in order to come closer to God and be successful in the hereafter. There is a lesson in the stories of such people for those who understand.